Welcome to PAPosseRacing.com. My name is John Kroll, and we're here this evening just outside of New Oxford in the race shop of Jimmy Siegel. Jimmy, the driver of the number 59 sprint car. Jimmy, uh, thank you for letting us come in here tonight and have a, have a little chat session with you. I'd like to find out a little bit more about you as a driver, of course, you and your, your career, how it got started. Uh, let's start with you on a personal level. Uh, you've been around racing as a driver a relatively short time. Yeah, about, uh, I guess this is my, it'll be my third full season, and, uh, and the 410's come out of Paris, two years, and uh, 358's, about a year and a half in micros before that, and it uh, didn't take too long to get out of those, we weren't having fun, spending just as much money as we would in a, in a 358, so uh, it's time to be racing with a little bit you know, more of a tough competition, and a way to learn to get out there with the guys that are good, and race against them. Absolutely. Rookie year, you, you give, us a, give us a feedback on your rookie year. What did it feel like? You said you were in the white rows, you, were, uh, you jumped into a 410. Give us an idea of what it felt like. Um, well, actually, the, towards the end of the second year of my 358, uh, Fred Raymer and some motor, and we went and kind of got my feet wet with the 410s and stuff. And uh, it don't really feel that much different when you get in a, in a 410 from a 358 uh, car wise, but speed is just so so much more evident and uh, I tell you what, it, it was a lot of fun and uh, I remember, you know, hot laps or time trials actually, I, I did a wheelie down the front straight away and I mean, I, I don't think I blinked for about a half hour, I mean, that was just something else and uh, I kind of got a kick out of it, you know, and uh, it, it's nothing else like it, it's hard to describe, uh, you, you can race. I think you can race all you want. I mean, you can race from the time you're five years old when you get one of those things and strap in and get out there and, and you actually feel that power. It's, it's self special. Well, I think they enjoy the part of watching you on the track, watching you in competition. That's their, like you said, they are a part of it. And even though that's actually you behind the wheel, you're sitting in the seat, you're, you're carrying a part of every one of those guys. And of course, there are families who make the sacrifices instead of, you know, instead of husband being home at night or dad being home at night throughout the week. He's here at the shop working, or he's, if it's the weekend, he's, he's at the racetrack, uh, obviously working. But I guess the big payday is when the checker flag falls and you pull into the winner's circle. That's just got to make it all yeah. worthwhile. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. I mean, I got I got lucky enough to get a win this year at Lincoln, and that's a, it's a great feeling for you, but then, uh, you know, it's really neat for me to get out and just uh, see the smile on all their faces and, uh, you know, you have your own views of what went on and what you know what you were doing. And you see it from a different seat, you know, and they, from where they're sitting and you get to look at it. And uh, you know, I know what it's like sitting there watching someone. I had to watch my dad do it. You know, all the nerves and emotions that you go through watching the thing. And uh, it's neat. You know, you get out of the car and they're all standing there happy. And uh, it, it really makes you feel like you did something more than just you know for yourself. And you did something more than just uh, want to race. You know, you know. Made somebody else happy. Absolutely, all their hard work paid off as well. Let's talk a bit about that win. It was an exciting day. I believe it was the last day race. Uh, of course, we start out in the afternoon show, Saturday afternoon at Lincoln Speedway. It was last uh, day race before the nighttime schedule. Run us through the day. Take us, take us from the time you got to the track and, and run us through the afternoon. Um, tell you the truth, I really don't remember much. Up leading up to it, uh, you, you know, try to think about these things and remember the stuff you did, just little things you know through the day. But uh, you know, I know I was excited because I knew the past couple weeks we had good race cars and uh, we had a point average by then, so we ended up dropping out of two races and uh, you know nothing of our own doing. We just got caught up in, in some other messes and uh, so I knew we had a good car going there. And I was really you know. It was going to be a good time to win a race. That was going to be it. You know what I mean? Daytime races. I like I like slick tracks. And I like daytime races. And you start up front. You know, so uh, did everything it took to you know get the invert and you know, all that good stuff to get the start up front. And then uh, just everything seemed to fall our way. I, mean, I remember uh, getting the second fall and Brian around forever, and I felt like I was faster than him. And, Looked like I was faster than him. I could catch him when I wanted to, but I just, you know, couldn't get, couldn't get the right line on him. And we got the lap traffic, and you, know, you try to wait and be patient, but it's kind of right there. And he actually, 
he actually started stretching me out at one point. And, uh, I remember we had a red flag. Uh, I think it was eight laps left. And, you know, I just kept telling myself, you know, you're right, you know, you're going right here now. He's as close as he's going to be to you. You can't, you can't let him get away. You can't, you know, this is it. you got to win it. And it's going to have to be now. And, uh, you know, the guys got to come out the track and they, you know, they kind of all gave their two cents and uh, kind of getting pumped up, you know, and then you get back out there and uh, he actually got me real good on the start, had a great start, and I thought that was it. I thought, well, I'm going to run the second now. So, you know, I know he usually don't make too many mistakes. So I figured he was going to be, you know, really watching himself there in the last couple laps and uh, just started running harder and I got lucky and caught up to him. I think he was getting a little, uh, a little nervous and spinning the tires and doing some other things and uh, once I called him I, I think he gave me two to go when I finally got close enough where I thought I could pass it and uh, I just thought well uh, you know if I'm gonna do it I gotta do it now and just started throwing slide jumps for me. <laughs> Probably wasn't the safe distance to be going at it like that, but uh, I trust Brian, he knows I and he trusts me and we you know kinda how much other operating groups uh, always seem to end up on the track to find each other and uh, we were friends off the track so I mean, no, that's going through your head at the time. You just want to win the race, but uh, just to have like, uh, you know, lucky in one of them stuck and uh, have to be on the last lap, so it probably made it pretty good for the fans. Yeah. About everybody else. We talked about your, your win at Lincoln Speedway. Uh, you mentioned the fact you like the day track. You like the slick track. A lot of drivers don't like those tracks. They dread that first couple of races of the year when they're on an afternoon track. Of course, it's usually pretty uh, pretty sunny out, the wind's blowing, and uh, it drives them out real good. It takes a special talent, and it's, I think it's somewhat surprising. A driver with possibly as little experience as you have, you actually enjoy that type of racing surface. Yeah, I think it uh, it puts a lot back into the driver. It takes, you know, it takes a little bit out of just being able to go around there on a wet track. You can kind of just fly by the seat of your pants, and whatever happens, happens. And uh, if you got good equipment, you can come out pretty good. Um, when it's slick, you know, you got to be smooth on the wheel and you got to be smooth with your feet and, uh, you know, a lot more, a lot more things can happen. It's just, I think it's a lot more, you know, racy. Um, I know my dad always liked slick tracks. I think probably that's where I got it from. I mean, he always, before I ever got in a race car, he used to point out guys to be like, um, Danny Smith and some other guys from Ohio that, uh, race on those slick tracks that were just smooth and tell me to watch, you know, watch his hands, watch, you know, watch when he's out of the gas, watch what he's doing and, uh, uh, really kind of, you know, turn me on to that kind of driving style, trying to be as straight as possible. He criticizes me sometimes now and says I'm too smooth, but uh, I think the less work you have to do with the car, you know, the better, um, the better you can be. It's certainly great to see that uh, that you you enjoy that. We've talked in central Pennsylvania a lot, and I believe right now they, they call Donnie Kreitz the master yeah. of the daytime tracks. And it may not be too long, we'll be saying Jim Siegel, uh, he's the master of the daytime track. <laughs> It was a situation earlier this year, or the past season, I should say, at Susquehanna Speedway Park, you were actually leading the race. Yellow flag comes out, and track officials all the way around the track are trying to let you know you've got a right rear tire going down. What, what are you thinking? Um, it's kind of, you know, you can't really tell how flat it is there for a while until it gets pretty flat, and then you know. Um, I was just thinking, you know, if I can just get some distance between me and the, the pace car and get it spinning and get it hot. Maybe if we get going, it'll, you know, it'll get hot and it'll get the air pressure built back up and I'll be all right. Um, you know, that's, you know, kind of the least of your worries. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, but you know, you got, I look at the scoreboard and Lance is behind me and Fred's behind him and it's like, you know, and you got this flat tire and it's, <laughs> you kind of had all, everything going on. Well, we were good. That was the first time we, uh, we brought out our, our second car of the year, a brand new car. And it, fast and it's just frustrating uh, you know to go out there and, r and run that good all night long and then have it be taken out of your hands by something like that I mean there was a couple times later on in the year like that stuff happened it was so tough good race cars running you know first or second or whatever and you know just things happen and you can't you can't sit well and you just got to say you know, that's, that's the car that we built and go on the next one Exactly. Now with 2004 complete, let's talk a little bit about 2005. Sitting right behind us, a new car, a new J and J chassis. What's what's in the works for the single operation? Um, pretty much the same thing as last year. I'm going to run Lincoln every week. Um, I'd like to run the group a little bit more. Uh, I think my dad wants to stay at Susquehanna. Susquehanna's got a good deal going there. Um, it's rough on Thursday night sometimes. You know, uh, get the car ready. 
you're always see you around the deal. I mean, you're working almost all year round, and uh, but that's about it. You know, I hang out with some friends, and uh, you know. Usually watching racing on TV or something. And speaking, I've got racing on every night, so there's always something to watch. How about you? You mentioned goals. You have your goals set for 2005. Um, you know, I usually kind of rebuild as as the time goes. I know uh, the big thing I want to do is just finish every race. Um, I think I had like seven DNFs uh, last year, and between all the races I ran, and uh, that just didn't kind of cut it for me. I, I need every lap that I can get, so that's big for me right now. I just want to you know. DNFs, um, as many laps as I can get, and uh, you know, obviously you want to improve on what you did last year, which we did this year, but I don't think it was enough. And uh, you know, we want to race, and that's nice, but you know, I want to win more than one. You know, obviously you want to repeat it and prove to yourself that you can do it on a, you know, more than just a one-time view. How about the future? We talked about the future of sprint car racing. How about the future of Jimmy Siegel? Oh, I don't know. Um, obviously, I, I want to be racing for. As long as I can, um, you know. Like I said, we I got some pretty good people behind me, and, and uh, but basically it's a family family run deal. I mean, when it all went down, my dad drove for uh, South Star Pitta, and he was gonna quit. They were both gonna quit, and South decided to give everything to me, so we kind of inherited it. And uh, he still helps out as much as he can. You know, sends some checks from time to time, and he's really involved and, and really wants to know how I'm doing, and and. Uh, you know, we keep them posted, and, and uh, but for the most part, it's a family, family uh, deal. And you know, our parents they can't put the bill forever. So um, you know, I'd like to catch one somewhere else. Obviously, you know, if I can drive for somebody else, or if somebody can come and help us, and, and uh, you know, keep our operation going a little longer, um, would be great. Uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to. Do it for as long as I can. I'd like to do it for as long as my dad did, but I mean, you never know if that's possible. There's a number of things that could happen. You don't try to think about that stuff. I just take it day by day. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed with an opportunity to get to do something I love to do and uh, just kind of see the moon and, and take advantage of what you're getting and, and you know, don't forget it. You know? So, sprint car racing, it sounds to me like sprint car racing is all you want to do. You're not interested in in looking to a, a different type of race car? Uh, no, not really. I'd like to do some pavement stuff. I think it'd be, yeah, I think I could make a pretty good pavement driver. Um, and then obviously a lot more money, you know, if you can go up, you know, NASCAR and things like that. But I like spec car racing. I mean, it's, it's what I always, you know, loved and that's what I always like to watch. I think it's just, I don't know, running, sure running, you know, 400 miles and, you, know, you get the race a lot longer, two hours or whatever, sitting in a car going around is probably pretty fun, but, uh, you know, nothing beats sliding sideways, you know, putting a good slide job on somebody on, on a dirt track, and heck, it feels like you're out there for two hours, and it's only like, you know, what, six minutes or something. <laughs> so, uh, I, I like it, you know, I, li I like where I'm at. Like I said, I'd like to, we'd like to try some people. We thought about doing some stuff, but, you know, that's a whole other deal, and it's a big investment. Um, you know, it's still a sprint car, it's just on pavement, just something different. But I, I like where I'm at now. I mean, I'd like to, to stay where I'm at. And obviously, get better, and get further in my career. Well, it is very exciting, and it's very exciting to watch you. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, you and some of the other young guns are the, the future of the world of sprint car racing is in good hands for sure. Jimmy, we want to thank you for allowing us to come into your shop, take some of your time away. I, I know you don't have a lot of free time. We certainly appreciate you giving us the opportunity to stop by this evening. Wish you the best of luck in 2005 and for the rest of your, your future in sprint car racing or wherever you end up racing at. We wish you the best. We congratulate you on the success you've had. And I think um, it's just a matter of a few more laps under your belt, some more seat time, and, and those goals you set will be made. Yeah, I, I like, you know, thank you guys for coming out. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. Um, you know, if we can't make it to a racetrack, we're sitting around the computer, you know, waiting for you guys to, to update. And uh, it's a good deal. It's a good deal for every, every sprint car fan out there. You guys give a lot of good information out to the public. And, uh, you know, obviously your fans just like us. And it's, it's good to see, uh, you know, people putting their heart into something like that. And, uh, Thanks for coming out and let you see. And hopefully, uh, we'll see you at the track or something. Absolutely. Thank you again. And thank you, all the fans who make this uh, possible. And like Jimmy said, if you can't make it to the track, 
Check it out at paposseracing.com.